Well, that, tonight, the, the power to change your mindset. This, is, this may sound a little weird. Uh, did anybody uh, know who this fellow on the right is? Uh, yeah, Moses. Okay, think of this. Okay, you're there. You're, a, you're, you're just a goat herder. You go up. A bush is burning, and the voice of God is coming out. It tells you what to do, and you argue with the bush. <laughs> okay, I just love that. Okay, but his mindset. Think of this. Okay, he's got enough power to go in there and say, "No, I'm not the right guy. I, I, you know, I've got a speech impediment. You know, I've been there before. They didn't really like me." Okay, so so you got to understand, mindset is incredible. Now, first off, when we're talking about mindset, we want to talk about current belief systems. Because if you can break the belief systems that you have, have you ever heard of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or Lou Gehrig's disease or diabetes or cancer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. You've heard of these things? Yeah. Do they exist? Yeah, in theory, yeah. In, in theory. What, what does Lou Gehrig's disease look like away from the body? What shape is it? How much does cancer weigh? What, 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 what shape is diabetes? I'm, so, I'm sorry, what, what, I'm confused. You mean it doesn't actually exist? You mean the, all these conditions are made up? That the symptoms are real? It's just the body adapting to environmental stimulus that creates these diseases. So these diseases don't actually exist. They don't. It's a belief system. It's a belief system that people that have tumors of their body, and we're going to call it cancer, not an adaptation. You've got to figure, all diseases, and at least 96%, come from deficiency or toxicity. So can disease be reversed? Yeah. I mean, you see this all the time. We talk about it, there's no cancer gene. Obviously, there's no cancer gene. If cancer affected 3% of the people 100 years ago, now it affects half. Genes haven't changed in 100 years. So what we need to look at is this is a belief system, or the way our mind works needs to be changed. Because a lot of people will say, well, well, you know, I, I really want to get my mindset changed. I want to attract health. I want to attract, you know, you know, a great mate. I want to attract wealth. I want to attract all this stuff. But I can't. I've got this disease or that disease or this condition. No, those are belief systems. So when I talk about cancer being a belief system, it is. It doesn't really exist. Now, now here, <clears throat> Dr. Emoto. Does thought have power? Yes. How do you measure it? See, you got to figure out, right now, we're in the dark ages still. You know, if you ask anybody in the 1300s, are you living in a modern age, they'll say, yeah, God, 100 years ago was the 1200s, this is the 1300s. <laughs> they didn't know that it was the actual dark ages, okay? But right now, thought does have power. We can't measure it. We don't know how to focus it. Okay, but it does have power. Now, Dr. Emoto, this, this, this fellow is brilliant. What he would do is take water from the same source. He would focus intentions at the water. And then he would freeze the water and he got different crystal formation, different crystal in, in, the, in the formations of it. Now, now, this one here, this is the original water after prayer and meditation. There's a book called Messages from Water. That's brilliant. Um, now, 70% of your body's water. So would thought have a, an effect on your body, positive or negative? Yes or yes? Yes. I know, I know, but, but it gets beyond that. How far will thought go? See, see, in his work, in his book, what they did is they did an experiment in Japan and in California. They had a, a test bottle and they had a few hundred people in Japan focus positive intentions at a jar in Los Angeles. We're talking 10,000 miles. Now, now, what they didn't know is there was a test jar up in San Jose. Okay, and so this, so they had, actually had crystal formation radically different at the jar they focused positive intentions to in Los Angeles. So this means thought, not only can it change the chemical or the mechanical structure of water, it can actually change um, water thousands of miles away. And we still can't measure it. So when, when you start looking at this, if a positive thought can do it, there are some people that master their destiny. They absolutely master their environmental circumstances. Okay, the tough part is most people are mastering their environmental circumstances in a negative way. 
And I mean, you know, the, the best one, this, this, this parent, and I brought this up a few weeks ago, she had two kids, they were both twin boys. Okay, one was happy all the time. I mean, it didn't matter what happened to him. The other one was negative all the time. And of course, you know, it was some kind of pathology, so she brought him to the psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist says, look, you know, Christmas is around the corner. Get the one that's sad all the time, every toy he could possibly play with, and get the one that's happy all the time, something that he wouldn't like. Okay, so, so you know, sure enough, then this was last year, the, the mom buys the kid who was grumpy all the time every toy in the world. So Christmas morning comes around, goes into the room, all the toys are laying around unopened. And the kid is in there just grumpy and upset and pissed off. And the, and the, and the mom goes, what, what's going on, son? You've got every toy in the world here. How come you're not playing with them? If I play with them, they're just going to break. You know, why even open them? It's going to get paper everywhere. Now, the other son, she got him a big, giant box of horse poop. And, and she's going in there, and, and she, she knocks on his room, and she hears the kid laughing, and sure enough, he's in the middle of this box, throwing poop everywhere around there. There's poop everywhere, and he's laughing, and he's having a good time. And, and, and he says, look, Mom, you can't fool me. I know there's a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> so, but, you know, it goes on perception, not what actually is happening to you. I mean, there's some people here, it doesn't matter. Emotional states, come on. How do you program your brain? How do you program your brain? See, if we're talking about mindset, we've got to understand how most people are doing it. Now, most people get up in the morning to read the newspaper. How many, how many people have ever read the newspaper? I do. I read the front page. Okay, while I'm at Starbucks waiting for my coffee, God knows I'm not going to open it up and I'm not going to purchase it because it's imbalanced. Does it talk about everything that happens during our world? No, it doesn't have the facilities. Does it balance the good with the bad? Does it talk about how many doors were open for pretty ladies? Does it talk about how many people... I mean, one of my patients, um, a very, very famous rock and roller, okay? Every Tuesday night, he goes down and runs a bingo machine, okay, at this old folks' homes where his mom used to be. His mom passed a few years ago. He still does it every Tuesday night. Now, this guy's very, very famous, multimillionaire, and he does this out of love. I've never seen him in the newspaper. Okay, so, so it's imbalanced. But now, to sell a newspaper, there's a lot of negative influence. And a lot of people get up there and read it. So that, that puts that, that in your mindset. It actually programs your mind to think that there's a bad economy, to think that there's, there's problems, to think that there's wars. Now, now, then, or they'll listen to the news. Or they'll listen to the news worse when they're driving in traffic. I mean, news stations are some of the most popular. Now, are those balanced? Or are they totally imbalanced? What kind of programming does your brain get when you, t when you hear about the war in Afghanistan, when you hear about starvation, when you hear about Darfur? I mean, these places exist. But, but should we put them in perspective of a planet of 7 billion people? How 6.5 billion are going to have a really good day today? Okay, you, you know, it, it's not accurate. And then you go to work, you come home, you pretty much veg out, you sit in front of the TV set and watch Three's Company. Wait, Three's Company's been off the air for a few years. Okay, I don't watch regular TV. Okay, there, there's, there's got to be something out there. Two men and a baby or something. There, okay, but I mean, these aren't educational stuff. They're not stimulating. You're not going to leave that, that night. And then, then, what's the average person do? What's the last program they typically watch on TV? News. News. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah, that's the program I want to get in my brain so I go to sleep so my subconscious works this over. Uh, that's, that's foolish. What you're going to get is a negative population that doesn't get it. Now, this person here, imagine this. You're 29 years old. Okay, you've got two kids. You're taking six um, antidepressant medications. Well, you're actually taking... They weren't all antidepressants. They were sleep medications, antidepressants, muscle relaxants. They couldn't find anything wrong with you. In fact, you had the diagnosis of bipolar disorder, which there's no blood test for. And so they couldn't figure it out, so they just said, you have fibromyalgia. You have an incurable disease. You're going to be miserable your entire life, and you're going to take medications. Oh, your insurance doesn't cover the medications, by the way. It's $1,000 a month. So she comes to see me. Is she happy or sad? Okay, now, she's been to multiple different doctors, okay, and I go in and I say, well, fibromyalgia doesn't exist. 
Now, this was the meanest thing I could have said to her because she's scared and she owns this disease. In her reality, her mindset was that fibromyalgia actually existed. And, and her doctors, these educated guys in white jackets, told her that she has this burden, this disease. So she owned it and she was taking the drugs for it. But she couldn't afford it. And she felt that there was something out there. So when I started in her brain that it didn't exist, that health was possible, within a month she was drug free, within 90 days we reshaped her spine, she was, had no medications. Okay, that, she got her health back. See, she didn't even realize that health was possible. Okay, and, and this, this is the tough stuff. Now, now, you've heard of placebo, right? How many people have heard of placebo? Okay, it's typically supposed to be like a sugar pill or something innocuous. When we talked about the flu shot, we talked about a really stupid thing with the ig ignorant flu shot companies are doing. They're mixing neurotoxins in with the placebo, okay? That's not a placebo. Okay, we're going to talk about real placebos. Placebos are something like, like a sugar pill or something that's not going to have an effect in the body. Now, you can take a sugar pill, give it to a person, and say it's a pain reliever. Now, their body will, it will release a natural pain reliever 40 times more powerful than heroin. I can give it to another person, same sugar pill. I can give it to another person and say it'll lower your blood pressure. Now, her system, then the same pill... Okay, one person will make heroin out of it. Another person will actually make a beta blocker or actually slow the heart down or vasodilate to lower blood pressure. And these are reproducible studies. We're talking 60% of the time. I can take another person who has, has indigestion. I give it to them and their stomach will actually produce less acid that we can measure. So this goes on the mind being able to control physiology so accurately that they can convert that sugar pill into virtually any drug you want. Okay, and this, this is just, just placebos. What most people don't know or think about is nocebo. This is like the evil twin. Instead of placebo, which means to please, nocebo means negative thoughts can actually have manifest into undesirable re results. I mean, you can actually think yourself into disease. You can change your mind, change your perception of reality, and develop disease, develop problems, develop worries. So when you're programming your brain, you don't want to program disease. Now, these are the three causes of disease. One of them, trauma. You can actually have your body misaligned, interrupt the nervous system, which controls everything, induce disease. You can have toxins. This is toxicity and poisons. We're going to cover this next week a lot in hidden toxins of the food. I mean, everybody knows pesticides. Did you know that corn is now listed by the EPA as a pesticide? No, it makes you think twice going to the Mexican restaurant and getting the dip. Okay, so, so toxicities and poisons. Thought. Have you ever heard of toxic thought as a cause of disease? It is. It is. So when we talk about programming your brain with news or depression or horror movies or anything like that, it has the ability to have the mind misinterpret signals. See, right now, if I was sitting on an iceberg, my mind would have temperature sensors on my skin. It would shut off blood vessels to my extremities in order to maintain my core temperature. It would do that. If my brain misinterpreted those signals, I would have a thing called reflex sympathetic dystrophy syndrome where my hands and feet would swell up, get cold, blue, red. And, and these are a mind misinterpreting signals of the environmental stimulus. This is huge, okay? So, so I want you to understand that the mind is what controls the immune system, controls... Ah! Oh, I'm sorry, was, was I the only one that got scared there? Okay, good, so what had just happened? Did, how many people get scared, other than me? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, well, first off, okay, now, did anything physically happen to you, or were you shocked? Okay, so what happens is your mind interpreted potential danger. So what happens is, and everybody, this is universal, heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up, cholesterol goes up, cholesterol goes up because it's used a precursor to stress hormones. Also, also blood sugar goes up. Why? Because if you think that there's perceived danger, your body gets ready to run away, okay? It dumps excess energy in. So this goes on, the mind actually lowers, shuts blood supply down to the gut, weakens the immune system and weakens tissue repair. Now what's crazy is if you can have this 
A chronic mind problem or a chronic perception problem, can you be misdiagnosed with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, weakened immune system, digestive disorders, yes or yes? Yeah. yeah, so it all has to do on perception, not what's actually happening to you. So your mind can change the physiology. Your mind controls every aspect of this body, your perception of the environment. It controls digestion, immune system, everything. Now, <clears throat> this, it, stem cells. Now they may be talking here about stem cells. What a stem cell is, and I want you to understand this, it's, we, we don't know how it works. We know that you have stem cells in your liver, in your kidney, in your immune system. The stem cell can actually go to, to um, the thymus or thyroid and turn into a T lymphocyte that will kill a cancer cell. It can go to the bones and turn into B lymphocyte and kill viruses and bacteria. We don't know how it does it. We don't know what makes it change. We don't know why a, why a stem cell can turn into a liver cell. We don't know why it can turn into a kidney cell. We don't know what initiates it. It's just know a stem cell can turn into whatever it wants. Uh, it's kind of like the queen on the chessboard. What, what, what does the queen do? Whatever she wants, okay, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Happy queen, happy life. Okay, but, but this is cool. When you look at it, each of us can become a planetary stem cell. This is Bruce Lipton. He says that each one of us can affect our entire environment just with thought, with thought. Now, so you, your thought can be environmental crisis, economic meltdown, or global warming. Your thought can be that pattern, or your thought can be absolutely incredible. Now, this was studied or published out of the Social Indicators Research. Now, this was a group of people, okay, a few hundred people, decided to go to a high crime area, Washington, D.C., and they meditated from June um, 7th of July 30th, 1993. Now, they didn't tell anyone they were going to do this. They told the police department this. And what was consistent is they had about a 25% decrease in crime in every city that they've done this before. See, they're in this room meditating for peace for their area. Does thought have power? Yes. Well, according to the, the um, chief of police, he said, in order for crime to have a 25% reduction, we'd have to have a snowstorm in July in D.C. Well, he was wrong. They had a 23.5% reduction in violent incidents that was reproducible when the experiments stopped, crime rates went back up to where they should be. So this means thought can change your environment. See, we're talking about mindset. So if our mindset is on success, will, attract, will, will success be attracted to you? See, if you want to be powerful, and you want to attract powerful people to you, you have to be powerful inside. If you want to attract attractive people to you, you've got to be attractive inside. You have to have that mindset of success, of health. Do you want to have health? You have to have health inside. You have to have that mindset that you're going to attract it into your life. So now, now I bring up these studies. This one here, another one too. We're talking crime levels and meditation levels on time levels. And this was done in the Philippines. We're talking Manila, we're talking New Delhi in India. We're talking America, all of these. And this was uh, printed in the Journal of Mind and Behavior. Again, the same thing. Group of people get together, meditate on peace and harmony, and crime rates and violent incident rates drop. So if your thought process can affect the environment around you, can it attract certain things to you? Yes or yes? Yeah, see, see I want you to understand, because if, if I just say, okay, do affirmations, do this, do this, I'm a science guy, okay? Thought can be measured, show me. We don't have the technology, but we do know this works. So now, <clears throat> this, is, this is where the real cool stuff comes in. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Okay, now, now the frustrating thing is, is, how many people have ever gone skydiving? How many people would like to? Okay, how many people would like to but are scared to? Good, that was me. Okay, good, good, good. So I tell my, my, my oldest boy, I said, yeah, I'd like to go skydiving. He said, okay, Dad. He calls me about an hour later. Yeah, we got a time. We're going this Saturday. He said, no, 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 buddy. No, I, I just said I wanted to. I, I meant like in the future. I didn't mean now. But what would you know if you, you knew you couldn't fail? Would you approach that really attractive, intelligent woman? Would you, would you go back to school? Would, would you change careers? What would you know if you couldn't fail? I mean, you gotta figure, we're, we're, we're 
in a comfort zone. If you go to a restaurant, you order the same thing. Life truly begins outside of the comfort zone if you push yourself a little bit more, if you realize that there's limitless potential in life. So when you're setting goals for health, for life, for, for everything, I, I mean, let's, let's make them limitless. I've got a patient, 69 years old, she had a chair that would carry her from the bottom floor up to the top floor. 69, that's a kid. She should be windsurfing. She shouldn't be having sore joints. So I told her, I said, your, your perception of age is wrong. Your joints are only about six, seven months old. We need to change your nerve supply, get you on enzymes. Sure enough, she regrew joints. She's walking now about four miles a day. She doesn't use the chair. And I told her when she first came to me, your grandkids are going to have a blast with it. Okay, so, so it it's, when we talk about set health goals, it's limitless. It's limitless. Running 100 miles, piece of cake. You can do whatever you want. But start, when you look at what would you do with, if you couldn't fail, look beyond your comfort zone to, to achieve in anything. This guy, Bert Rutan, he wanted to build a spacecraft. In my brain, I'm thinking NASA. He says, no, it's possible. He designs it. He wins a $10 million prize. A private guy, I love this guy. This guy here, <clears throat> this is the only good news I saw in the newspaper this morning, okay? They found Earth, another Earth bigger than ours. Okay, size does matter in planets, okay? But, but it's only like 600 light years away. This is actually a habitable planet with an appropriate temperature and water. It, it, you're supposed to say, wow, this is cool. Okay, so these are, are you know, once we solve the space-time thing, you know, we can fly over there and say hi. So now this is how we do it. This is how you change your mindset. There's two parts of the brain. Neither one of these really exist, but it's a way to view brain function. We can call one the conscious mind, one the unconscious mind. Now, the conscious mind doesn't have a lot of memory. It's more, it's like random access memory if you're a computer geek, okay? It's short term and it just does, is task oriented right at time. And that's about 12% of your brain function. The real, the real one is the 88% of the mind. That's the unconscious mind. This thing is, is what, what governs everything. Like right now, is your left kidney working harder than your right? You don't know. You can't even feel it. No, the subconscious mind is doing that. The unconscious mind takes care of your heart rate. It takes care of your spleen function. Your spleen is checking six million red blood cells every 20 minutes. The, your immune system is always working. Now, the, the, old, the old adage is the conscious mind sets the goals. So this is like the creative portion. But your unconscious mind actually gets the job done. It never sleeps. The conscious mind sleeps. The unconscious mind never rests. So if you can figure out a way to program that unconscious mind, and we know that thought has power, we know thought can affect our environment, we know thought can affect our health, can you achieve anything that you want or anything that you could think of? Oh, I don't know, like making a spaceship. Oh, sorry, been done. Okay, so when we look at this, okay, the unconscious mind is like the rudder on a ship. Okay, it actually guides you. It tells you where to go. So this is ideal. So if you can figure out how to program the unconscious mind, you can achieve anything, anything. This means health. This means attractive, intelligent, brilliant mate. This means good relationship with your kids. This, but it takes time. Okay, so now, now who has an extra two months a year to really work on personal development? Okay, good, good, okay. Out of a room of about 32 people have it. Well, I'm going to tell you, everybody has time. Okay, all it takes is about an hour a day. So if you take an hour a day, now, now granted, that's a lot because I'm up at four. Okay, I'm at the office by 5:15. I work till about 6:30 or 7 o'clock at night. I don't have a lot of free time, but guess what? I spend an hour a day at this. What's an hour a day in a year? 365 hours. Okay. Okay. What does that work? Okay. I know. I know. I know. So you're starting to think, wait a second, an hour a day. Okay. What if we break it up into four 15 minute segments? What if it's 15 minutes in the morning? Okay. Prayer and meditation and goal setting. What if it's 15 minutes at lunch? Prayer and meditation goal setting. What is 15 minutes before you go to bed? Prayer and meditation. So you see, you can get an hour a day. If you get just an hour a day to pray, meditate, goal set, or review your goals or write down your goals, 
by God, you got nine 40-hour work weeks at the end of a year. Nine 40-hour work weeks. And, and this is tremendous. And what you want to do is right before bed, review your goals. Now your goals, your dreams are actually going to be regrowing joints, regrowing a kidney, reversing cancer, okay, attracting wealth and abundance. Okay, I mean, it, it's, it's huge. <clears throat> then we have to look at this. You have to change your, your uh, this, this is an old one by Jack Canfield. I mean, it, brilliant. Talks about we can't control the events in our life, we can control our responses. Now, one of the, the things that propelled me into chiropractic is I was run over by a car. Okay, I had my legs broken, my sternum fractured, my teeth knocked out. You know, now I couldn't really control the event, but I did have control of my response. Now, the outcome was really cool. I became a chiropractor, okay, and taught anatomy. I mean, I learned how to fix joints. So the outcome was fantastic. But now we're going to step it up a notch. See, most everybody thinks that you can't control the events in your life. You can. See, if a person can focus thought in Japan and affect water in, in America, if a group of people can focus thought and change the violent actions of the community that they're around, can you change the events in your life? Yes or yes? Yes. Absolutely you can. See, this is, this is old. First you've got to learn how to crawl. Then you learn how to walk. This is how you fly. You can actually change the events in your life. Right now, if you're not aware of that, you can at least change your responses. And this changes the outcome of your life. It's huge. <clears throat> so first off, this is what you need to decide. You've got to decide what you want. Okay, and it's got to be specific, but it can't be, it, you, no limits. So if you've had joint pain for 30 years, fantastic dynamic new joints. Why? Because joints are only about six months old, you can regrow cartilage. If you want financial freedom, great relationship, anything, anything, write down a hundred of them. And do you know why you write down a hundred of them? Because you can write down like five or ten pretty easy. But if you're in a room, just you and a piece of paper, and you're writing, you're going to be tapping into a universal intelligence when you get to goal 20. When you get to goal 35, you're going to start to think, God, I can't think, oh, okay, I'll learn Mandarin Chinese. <laughs> why not? Okay, travel, don't know, Antarctica. I got a patient going to Antarctica. I never thought of that. I'd like to see a penguin. Okay, so, so you know, you start, you start thinking of this with limitless because it, it starts to expand your brain. Now, now I mean, it, it's even biblical. In the, in the Bible, it says, knock and what happens? The door opens. Okay, ask and what happens? It's given. It doesn't say ask and you might get something if you're lucky. I don't know. Let's look at it. No, this has been around for forever. See, we knew back then, you know, two, three thousand years ago, that thought had power. And, and this thought, this was so huge. But what I want you to do is change your brain, change the limits on it. Remember, life begins beyond your comfort zone. Okay, just think of the what, not the how. You know, I don't care if you're a paraplegic and you want to run a marathon. Okay, don't think of how you're going to do it. I played paintball with a double amputee. He had two giant springs for legs. We're out there, and, and the, the halfway in the paintball field is the 50 yard line. You know, we're all set to go. It's me and him versus another couple of guys. And I said, where are you going? Okay, he said the 50 yard line. <laughs> okay, that means he's gonna run through with all these paintballs flying at 300 feet per second, and he's gonna make it halfway up the field. I'm lucky to run like 15 feet before I'm going to get shot. And I said, you're kidding. He says, no, I'm going to the 50 yard line. Okay. So go, I run behind this barricade and he springs with these spring legs. And I thought, my God, that's an advantage. <laughs> I didn't think he'd make it. He's there. It was incredible. He, don't think of how. By God, he didn't. He was incredible. So now, when you look at this, there's a couple of differences between affirmations and incantations, okay? This is huge. First off, this, this has to do with both. If you're going to write something down, and this means a goal of limitless health, like let's say you're a double amputee and you want to make it to the 50-yard line. You write it down in positive terms, okay? You never put, because remember, you're working with your subconscious, your unconscious mind. It doesn't know negative or positive. It gets an order and it gets it done. You put bad information on the computer, is it going to 
decipher bad or good? No, it's just going to do the job. Okay, so this, it's never I want less bills. It's always I'm, I'm enjoying financial abundance. You need to write them down. You need to personalize them. But beyond it is to get the feeling. It's more important than anything. The feeling behind your goals, your mindset is more important than what you're putting down. And then you have to have a time specific on it. Now this, this is it. How many people have ever played golf? I suck at it. I've always sucked at it. It's, 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 it's horrible. I, I, a double par would be good for me. Okay, and that would be, that would be like a plus. So now, when I'm talking about how horrible I play golf, okay, what's your body posture like when you're thinking about your dog dying or something? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, slouching, it's bad. But I gotta tell you, the last time I played golf, I played nine holes. I had one hole that you wouldn't have believed. Oh my God, it was like Tiger Woods. I hit that sucker, it was like a rocket was powered. It went right over there, 150 yards on the green, right next to the hole. Okay, now, I'm describing golf. What's my body posture when I'm telling you about the one hit? Granted, I had 100 hits that day, but by, that one was amazing. I walked off of there thinking, my God, it was incredible. So first off, we're talking about neurolinguistic programming. This is the enthusiasm. It's a way to change your body posture to actually change your brain. Now what most people don't know is you're just one millimeter away. Now, now you can imagine this. If you're one millimeter off here, where is that going to end up? Okay, God knows where. Here, in fact, here, I'm going to throw this to you. Can you catch this? Okay, good. Now I'm gauging his, his distance. And I threw it to him. Here, toss it back. Okay, now, now I made it. Now, now this is actually incredible. If you, you couldn't really do a program like this to gauge the weight of the pen, the distance, my binocular vision gauged him, and I threw it, letting go of the pen to have it fly through the air, and it landed and hit him. Now, I'm just going to be one millimeter off, okay? Oh, it didn't even come close to him. Can you see that? So if you're just a little bit off, you're going to totally miss the mark. But if you get a little bit closer each day, each day, just a little bit, little bit closer every day, every day, and you do that every day, every week, every month, year after year, are you going to absolutely get your goal? Yes or yes? You have to. You have to. There's, there's no way to do it. So this is where, when you talk about enthusiasm, this is where the incantations come in. Now, I stole this off of one of the teachings of Tony Robbins, who is a master of neurolinguistic programming. And he talked about abundance. Now when he talks about abundance, he doesn't just sit there and talk about it. Remember, it's the feeling behind it. The feeling behind it. When he talks about it, it's incredible. It's power. Because when you're talking just normal, there's no enthusiasm. Remember, thought has power. And this is his uh, one on abundance. God wealth is circulating in my life. It flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, desires, and goals are met instantly by infinite intelligence. For I am one with God, and God is everything. By, I mean, just saying that, I got goosebumps. Isn't that cool? Okay, but, but it, again, it's enthusiasm. If you imagine, if you put down every goal you wanted, and set it with that enthusiasm, repetition. Are you going to teach your subconscious to achieve it? Yes or yes? Yeah. And so then, breathing, the feeling, visualization, that's ideal. And so on this handout, we also have exercises in breathing. I mean, how cool is that? And then you go in, and now let's say you've had too much. Let's say you've been through the Vietnam War, you've been through the Afghanistan War, you've been through Iraq, you've got some kind of major trauma. These, on this sheet, there are two methods, emotional freedom technique and the eye movement desensitization response, where you can actually change the negative events in your life into just an event. So you remove the negative consequences from it. And this involves um, tapping, and we already have the sheet here that shows you the different places to tap. We're going to cover this in greater detail in three weeks when we talk about changing your perception. But just know that if you've had a major negative event in your life that's stopping you 
from changing your mindset, from achieving the goals that you should, because you should. It's, it's your brilliance that scares most people. It's like this guy here, 56 years old. Okay, I mean, he comes in with high blood pressure medications, cholesterol medications. I mean, he feels that his joints, at 56, God, that's a kid. I mean, I'm almost 52 and I feel like a teenager, okay? He's 56 and he's feeling old. That doesn't make sense, okay? You know, five, six medications. Well, he comes in and then I just tell him, no, your body is designed to be healthy. It really is. Your doctors that told you you're sick are wrong. Sure enough, within a month he's drug free, within 90 days there he is. I, I, I mean, this gal here, again, another fibromyalgia case, another one. You know, same thing. You don't have an incurable disease, your doctor's wrong. Oh, he's from Hogue. Well, he's really wrong, okay? Oh, the Kaiser doctor said the same thing. They're both wrong, okay? Your body's healthy. Within a month, she was drug free. Within 90 days, she's cured of the disease. It, it's not one person. It's a hundred percent. Once you change the physiology, you change the perception, you change the dynamic, and the body builds itself healthy. It's not just one person. It's a hundred percent. What's our success rate with asthma? A hundred percent. Always. Now, these are the cornerstones. This is what your body requires for optimal health. You need proper nerve supply, regular exercise, nutrition, uh, sufficient rest, and this one here, prayer and meditation. Can you see how important this is? At the end of this month, we're gonna talk about meditation techniques. Why? Because it's programming your subconscious. Okay, today all I wanted you to do is I wanted you to understand that thought has power. It's actually tangible. If you focus it in any direction you want, you're gonna achieve whatever goal you want. Okay, absolutely. Now, I mean, at our office, you know, to get checked, because obviously if you've got some kind of nerve pressure, your body's not going to function correctly. Um, at our office, this, for the winter special up through the end of December, $25 gets you a posture analysis, consultation, x-rays, exam, everything. So if you're visiting, if you have friends visiting, last year we had a guy, Willem, who came from Germany. Um, two kids, diabetes, uh, he couldn't feel his feet. He was here for a month, okay? Within a month, feeling restored to his feet, and I guess now he's reduced his insulin by 90%. So he's kind of happy because he's able to play with his kids. So the reason we do this at this time of the year is because, I mean, we're all part of the same family. If you, would help so if you could help someone, wouldn't you? What if they were in Korea or Australia? Yeah. Yeah, we're all the same family. We're all the same team. So now, thank you so much for making it here. Lori's in the back. She's got the coupons, but all of these are recorded. You guys rock. You're health warriors. <laughs>